Yo, what's going on you guys? My name is Owen and welcome back to another video. Hope you guys are all having a great day so far. Today's video is going to be kind of like a wild card video. I don't really know exactly what the format's gonna be, but today's video is honestly just gonna be firing from the hip. I have a random assortment of items to show you guys. Some stuff that was sent over to me, some stuff that are just some new pickups, um, some non-fashion items. I have a couple of books I wanna show you guys, a couple of accessories, and also, I want to include a couple of gift ideas. I know that the holidays are pretty much past, but a lot of people were asking me for some gift ideas just in general. Um, so I figured why not toss them into this video. It's gonna be sort of a rambly video. We'll see how it goes. But yeah, sit back, relax, enjoy, and let's hop right into the video. I also wanted to quickly thank you guys because the release for the Ahab denim, which was my most recent Somar release, was insane. I think everything pretty much sold out over the weekend, within 24 hours, like 90% of everything was gone. So that was kind of crazy. I'm not sure exactly when this video goes out, but hopefully all orders are sent out by then. I know the holiday time sort of bottlenecks a lot of fulfillment centers, which is what I use for my brand. I don't personally pack and ship everything, but for a lot of orders that are in the West Coast area, we pack and ship ourselves. I just wanted to quickly thank you guys. Lots more stuff coming soon. I've got a bunch of stuff over here, something right there. Just stay tuned and I'll be showcasing more Somar items in the future because I know you guys really like that stuff and I love showing it to you guys. Lots of behind the scenes stuff coming soon working on a couple of short films. I also wanted to quickly thank Farfetch for sponsoring this video. They sent over a bunch of really cool stuff. Some stuff that I used for some Somar styling and some like random accessories and random bits and bobs that I was sort of missing. For those of you who don't know, Farfetch is sort of like a massive hub for small boutiques to be able to make their selection available online. All taxes included, you won't get hit with like a random fee from like a mailman at your doorstep. That's happened a couple times and it really sucks. They have the largest online selection of designer goods in the world. They have clothes, accessories, home goods, um, some tech stuff, you name it. It's probably on Farfetch if it's really nice. So yeah, let's hop right into a couple of the pickups. Okay, I'm gonna start off with this guy right here. This is sort of a new item for me. It's something that I've never really experimented with and that is capris or like extra long shorts. When I wear shorts, I normally go for something that's right below the knee or right above the knee, but I was sort of missing a longer short in my wardrobe. And so I grabbed these Our Legacy shorts. These are from, I believe their newest collection. And they're sort of like a cut off baggy jean silhouette in this really beautiful gray denim. I'm not a massive fan of the texture. It's just personally not my favorite um, denim texture. I after doing the Ahab denim, I had to like go through so many swatches of denim and I'm very, very particular about it. These jeans also do fit on the larger end, so I do have to belt them up. Um, I got a size 48. I probably should have gone with like a 44 or 46, so I might swap these out eventually. But as of right now, I think it's a really cool silhouette and it's something that I'm really glad that I experimented with and tried out. You guys will see in the on body how I style these things. I think these look best with either like a really slim sneaker or a really chunky, like oversized boot. Um, anything in between, I feel like doesn't really complement the Capri short silhouette, I guess, but to each their own. Continuing with another pair of bottoms, I was sent over these jeans from Professor E, which is a really fantastic Taiwanese brand that I've own countless pieces from. I really appreciate their attention to detail when it comes to their design. They love to do like very intricate embroidery and usually like a lot of crazy paneling and construction. And I was recently sent over, they are the 2023 fall winter E skater jeans. And I got a size 48 in these jeans. Hopefully the camera is able to pick up some of the embroidery detail. It's sort of like a wide cut baggy pair of jeans with some really intricate paneling going on. It has like a twisted seam that runs down to the front of the leg. And then it has like a floral brocade style embroidery pattern running down following the seam. It's done in a black denim and it has this back buckle system right there, which I think is really cool. 
The back side also has a slight twisted seam as well that runs from the back pocket down to the back of the leg. I think these jeans will look really great over time as they start to like lose some of that extremely, extremely dark pigment and become a little bit more faded. I might even try sun fading these because right now they're just extremely dark and you can't see any of the details, but I think over time it'll just look really, really nice. So yeah, those are the E skater jeans. I highly recommend checking out Professor E if you haven't explored their selection before. Like I mentioned earlier, I've been like supporting that brand for so long it's really cool that they now start to like reach out to me every once in a while and ask if I want anything from their new selection so thank you guys I'll save the non clothing or fashion items for the end of the video so make sure you stay tuned to that if you're interested next up I want to show you guys a pair of shoes these were sent over to me by my friend Alberto Alberto runs a Italian footwear brand called demon that he like basically like inherited I think from either his grandfather or his great-grandfather and he sort of like revitalized the brand in 2020 and kind of like made it his own. And yeah, this is a early pair of a silhouette that he's gonna be rolling out pretty soon. These are called the Lovo boots. I have one other pair of demon boots that I believe I've shown off in the channel before, but this is a new silhouette. We've had like three or four um, FaceTime calls kind of like going over the shoe. He was like showing me the samples and stuff and then giving me like the story and the rundown on like how this shoe is made and the like, technology behind it and everything. So as you can tell, the actual silhouette of the shoe is insane. It has like an asymmetrical claw-like toe box where the toe kind of like arches in towards the top and then the lacing system also follows that same sort of arch so it has like an asymmetrical look to it. The upper is actually leather but it's treated with like an anti-abrasion coating that kind of gives it this really awesome like tree bark like rubberized texture. Lots of different material combinations going on. Very subtle branding. It has their logo demon right there. And then it has some more writing on the inside that says unknown culture. The actual sole itself is massive. You guys might be able to tell. The sole itself extends way past the heel and also way past the toe. I wanna to say this is a size 42 or 43, but it fits me perfectly. But compared to other shoes, it looks massive, but it does actually fit me, which is really funny. The actual sole on the bottom is a Vibram sole, but the sole is actually a little bit different than your traditional Vibram sole. This is a Vibram XS grip sole, which is the same sole used on a lot of climbing shoes. And a lot of climbing shoes also will have a hooked toe, which gives like a little bit better of, you know, performance when climbing. So it's sort of like a climbing shoe in those regards, obviously not like hyper-functional for that, but that was definitely one of the inspos he told me. Lovo means wolf in Venetian dialect, and I can absolutely see the resemblance because when you wear these, you kind of look like you have like wolf feet. So yeah, really sick pair of shoes. Demon is absolutely killing it. Some of the most like unique footwear designs I've I've ever seen and I can't wait to see what Alberto comes up with next. Um, definitely go support him and his brand. They're still trying to make a name for themselves and they have some incredible imagery. Thank you Alberto for sending these over. Next up I want to show a couple of more Farfetch items that I actually used for the Somar shoot for the rollout of like the Ahab denim. One of my favorite looks we put together was this look right here, which is sort of like an all black faceless mannequin. Um, something that we've used in the past and I think we're gonna keep using, um, sort of as like an anti-model sort of vibe. Two of the items from that look were sent over from Farfetch. Uh, the first one is this Our Legacy polo right here. This is an acrylic and wool blended polo. I actually don't own that many polos and it's something that I've been trying to get more into since I sort of go for like the slightly more smarter, sophisticated look these days. Um, and it just feels incredible in hand and I'm really glad that I got a size, I think it's a size 46. Yeah, size 46. It's nice and fitted and also because of the weight of it, it can be paired up underneath something or also on top of another layer. So it's like the perfect mid layer. And I'm a huge fan of the final look that we put together with this piece. It's gonna be something I'm holding on to for a very long time. It's just like so comfortable. In case you wanted to get this exact same one, it's called the Le Peak Polo. Our Legacy tends to do different variations and like different material combinations and colors of the same silhouette. So I'm sure if they don't have this specific one anymore, they'll probably roll out another version soon. 
soon. And the other item that we used in that look, besides the Ahab denim, obviously, are the shoes. And the shoes are these Le Mer grained ankle boots. Extremely nice pair of shoes. I only own a couple of Le Mer items and the craftsmanship and the quality is always insane. We were after something that's extremely like minimal, very little branding, very little detailing going on, just super simple. Everything about the shoe is incredible from like the shape of the toe box to like the actual heel height and then also the shaft height as well because I have a couple of other cowboy boots, as you guys can probably see back there, but they're much, much taller, and these are so easy to slip on. Um, I got a size 43. It was actually the last size available. Um, I probably would have gone with a 42 if I had the option to, but I had to go with a 43. I'll just throw like an extra insole on there. And then eventually I will have to get these Vibram out on the bottom, just because right now it has like that standard untreated sole that's just like super slippery. So while we were like shooting this, I was just slipping around like crazy. Really nice pair of shoes. I love like the grain on the leather too. So yeah, these are called the Le Mer grained ankle boot in case you wanted to grab a pair for yourself. Highly, highly recommend it. And I know they have a couple other colors too. And I'm pretty sure there's like a brown suede pair that looks really nice. So we'll see if I grab those in the future because I'm a massive fan of these. I think next up, I wanna show you guys a couple of t-shirt pickups. One of my favorite things to collect are vintage tees. And I got some really cool ones I wanna show you guys. I'm gonna start off with my favorite first. This right here is a Dead Space 1 t-shirt. Dead Space is one of my favorite franchises. From the games to the animated movies, I've always loved Dead Space. Um, this is from 2009, obviously, but the level of fade and like distressing on this is so sick. It looks like it's 20 plus years old, but um, obviously it's not. Uh, I've been on the hunt for this specific graphic for a minute. Most Dead Space tees have like one of these graphics on it, which are cool, don't get me wrong, but it's not necessarily what I was after. I wanted like the original cover art. These are surprisingly hard to come by and I eventually found one on Depop. Love the graphic, it's so sick. There's nothing on the back, but the fit and the fade is incredible and I've just been wearing this pretty much nonstop. So I wanted to show you guys that real quick. This next tee is another video game tee. I got it a while ago, but I never got a chance to show it off on the channel. This is a Resident Evil Zero tee. Crazy, crazy piece. Um, Resident Evil Zero is from 2002, I believe. And yeah, this is such a unique tee in terms of like the distressing and stuff. I feel like you never see gaming tees with this level of like paint splatter on it. It's kind of crazy. Um, so the front is pretty simple. It says Resident Evil Zero. And then on the back you have the big Zero hit. For those of you who don't know, my dog's name is Zero. So it kind of goes hand in hand with that. But yeah, this t-shirt fits incredible. I love how it's like basically faded to a gray at this point. And this is one of the few tees I actually took with me to Japan as well. It was just in the rotation at that point. Um, I have quite a few Resident Evil t-shirts now. Resident Evil is another one of my favorite franchises. I love like the horror shooter genre and yeah even down to the, the movies really really cool franchise if you haven't played resident evil you got it the next couple of tees were actually given to me by one of my friends vintage stores brothers vintage um, he gave me two t-shirts this first one right here is a vintage poison tee with this insane graphic on the front i'll probably end up getting this one hemmed a little bit just because it's a tiny bit long but it does have the skull graphic on the front in this like really beautiful like red color that's like super faded. And the actual t-shirt itself is sort of like in between a gray and a green, which is a color that I do not have in my current rotation. And then on the back, you can see the Native Tongue World Tour graphic. The actual Poison logo itself is incredibly faded. It's like barely visible. This is on a giant XL tag, which is one of the more like sought after tags in vintage tees. Single stitch, hem and sleeves. And the other t-shirt I want to show you guys, I'm actually wearing right now. This is a vintage My Dying Like Gods of the Sun long sleeve. Here, I'll see it. That's what it looks like on body. It has a really sick graphic of the album cover art, Butterfly, right there. It's from 1996. 
It's got some little sleeve hits going on. It's got a back hit. I'm a massive fan of vintage long sleeves. And one of the biggest things that I like about this is, I don't know if this was already altered or something, but the sleeves don't have like the traditional ribbing that you'd see on a vintage long sleeve. Like it doesn't have a cuff. Um, it's just like the fabric and it's hemmed. So I don't know if that was done after the fact, if somebody in the past like had it tailored or something. I feel like most of the time that's why I don't gravitate towards long sleeves because it doesn't look good with cuffs. But this one's really sick. Brothers Vintage has some of the craziest vintage tees I've ever seen. Some like massive holy grail items. So if you're on the hunt for some crazy stuff, definitely give them a look. Massive shout out to August over there for hooking it up with these tees. Let's see what else we got. Moving on to another pair of shoes. One of my most worn pairs of sneakers as of recent have been my Keen Unique sneakers. They're just like my go-to walking shoes. Whenever I'm walking zero, throw on those shoes. They're super easy to slide on. However, Keen actually hit me up and they asked me if I wanted a, another pair of shoes. Um, I didn't really know what to go for because I already like, had the pair of shoes I loved from them. But then I saw that they had these and I was like, hold up, these are kind of crazy. Um, let me see what they're about. These are the Keen, again, they're called the Keen Unique, but these are the Keen Unique sandals in their premium leather. Yeah, it's just a wild, wild shoe. Moxon style sandal with a woven leather toe box upper, a little back strap in the back, and then it has a toggle lacing system. They don't really tend to style the sneakers that I have. I just treat them as like my normal walking shoes. But these actually, I think, have a lot of potential for like making some really cool outfits. Shout out to Keen for sending these over. These are gonna be getting so much wear. And yeah, I'm excited to see how the leather breaks in too. You can see from the bottom, these are brand new. I have not gotten a chance to wear these out yet. Another pair of bottoms I wanna show you guys were sent over to me by Lock Demure, I believe is how you pronounce the brand. Um, I believe they're based out of Copenhagen and I have a few items from them now. I have their zip up sweaters, um, but I wanted to show you guys these jeans right here. These are called the Ink Belted Bootcut Jeans. Really amazing pair of jeans. I love the fit on them too. Uh, it's like a really, really great leg fit. And then it's done in a black denim. It has a built-in belt system with a piece of extra long fabric going through the belt loops and it has a little button up there so you can actually button up the belt loop rather than just like tightening it like the La Mer jeans that I have, if you guys remember those. Standard four pocket execution. It's got your two front pockets up front and then two back pockets right there. These have a crazy long inseam. They stack beautifully. This is the other item that they sent me. This is a knit hoodie in this really beautiful like cropped cut. I've never had a knit hoodie before and it's so comfortable and it looks really sick. Extremely, extremely heavy. I believe this is a cotton knit. It's got a nice cropped body. It's got a dual closure front zipper so you can unzip it from the top or from the bottom. And then these sleeves are sort of like wide and elongated so it just like stacks beautifully. Nice oversized hood. Um, I actually have a brown one as well but I want to show you guys the black one. I think this would look really great over top like a button-up shirt, which is probably how I'm gonna be styling it. And by the way, do not put knit stuff on hangers for an extended period of time. I just had it on here for the video. I have three more fashion items before I get into some non-fashion items I wanna show you guys. So let's keep going. So you guys probably know that most of the time when I wear a belt, I just wear my Somar belt. However, I did recently pick up this Our Legacy belt from Farfetch. This is their two centimeter Love and Tears belt. It's sort of like an extra long Western belt with these studs that line the entire length of the belt. It has like a little red heart and some silver hits. I'm a massive fan of extra long belts and I think this one looks really sick. I've been after like a studded belt for a minute and I just hadn't found the right one until I spotted this guy. I love the little hit of red. It's just like the right amount of color, I guess. The last Our Legacy item that I have to show you guys is another sweater. I've been on a big sweater kick recently because I pretty much got rid of all my sweaters. So I got this guy right here. This is their round neck silhouette, which is a silhouette that they've been doing for many years. I do still have a black one in this same cut, but it's also like a different size. And I really like the texture of this too. This particular version is a llama, silk, and poly blend. So it has this really cool 
texture to it that's sort of like brushed out. I wanted a smaller size because I wanted a slightly tighter fit because the other one I have is like sort of like an oversized fit. And yeah, the color is fantastic. I don't own any gray sweaters, so this was very needed in the wardrobe. Perfect for like the holiday season too. Super cozy. Probably end up using this for some Somar styling in the near future, we'll see. The round neck is easily one of my favorite cuts for sweaters. This is sort of like the perfect fitting sweater for me because it's not super tight and it's also kind of like cropped and boxy and the sleeves aren't incredibly like tight or anything. Moving on to the last clothing pickup before we get into some non-clothing pickups. This was sent over to me by the boy Adriel Shout out to Adriel from Object 22. This is from their new release. This is the Blood Clot Sweater. Incredible, incredible sweater. Wide and oversized and distressed. You guys can see like how it's been pulled apart around the neck and hems. And then I really like the asymmetrical stitching detail. On the left sleeve, it has one row of white thread that stitches around the sleeve. And then on the right sleeve, it has two rows. It's a really small detail, but I really appreciate it. And I think it looks really sick. The texture is extremely, extremely soft. It is a mohair blend. I don't know exactly what the percentage is, but I did get a medium in this piece. And yeah, Object 22 is always killing it. And I really appreciate Adriel for sending this over. Moving on to some non-fashion items. I will show you guys a couple of book ideas that might make for some great gifts. Or if you're just into fashion, art, interior design, whatever it may be, these might be up your alley. This first book I just recently picked up for myself for my birthday. It is Designing Design by Kenya Hara. Kenya Hara was one of the main designers at Muji, I think in the early 2000s. I have not read this yet, by the way, so I'm just like going off what I know about the book. He sort of talks a lot about Japanese design philosophy. From what I hear, he showcases this design challenge that he gave to a bunch of other industrial designers um, or product designers. And the challenge was to redesign toilet paper, I'm pretty sure. Again, I haven't read this yet, so I can't speak to any specifics, but I'm pretty sure there is like a, oh yeah, there it is. Toilet paper redesign, something that makes it more efficient, I'm guessing. If you yourself are into design language or you know somebody who is, this might make a good gift. On to the next one, I just recently got this. This is the first edition of the Small Hours magazine, which is by Ray Mia from Ore, New York City. And I really appreciate that he's delving into something that's non-clothing related. It's really hard to do a magazine. It takes so much time, dedication, effort, lots of planning and execution to pull something like this off. I believe you can pick this up off the Ore website and it would make for a great coffee table book. If you're into Americana, military, vintage, some other local brands, this is absolutely a necessary pickup. And yeah, you're supporting another small creator. I want him to do more like this, so we gotta support it. For a couple of coffee table book recommendations, one that I highly recommend is the Punk Shirts book by Brian Ray Turcott. This book is so sick. Obviously you guys know that I collect a lot of band tees. And this one has a really great documentation of so many different band tees, a couple of which I actually have, which is really cool. You guys have probably seen that one Instagram reel that went kind of viral. But yeah, really sick book, makes for a great coffee table book too. And last up is this guy right here. This is the Cy Twombly Homes and Studios book. Cy Twombly was an American artist and this book specifically isn't necessarily about his art, but more about his homes and studios, obviously, and like the interior design of them um, because he had some beautiful homes and studios that were just like decorated so well. Really great recommendation for a coffee table book if you know somebody who's into interior design or who's into art. So might recommend checking that out. The last two items I actually don't have with me here, but I'll be including some B-roll footage for you guys. I just moved and I wanted to pick up a couple of nice home good items thanks to Farfetch again. The first couple items that I got are these bowls and plates from the Anda Mulemeester collaboration with Serac. Serac's being the home goods brand. I've wanted some items from this collaboration for literally years, but haven't really had the means to get it because they're kind of expensive for what they are, but I think they'd actually make for really nice gifts as well. I got a set of the two small bowls and then a set of the two small
small plates. The collaboration I believe is inspired by eyes. So if you're on the hunt for like a last minute gift or just for a gift in general, I think those would actually be a really nice one. I think the smaller set of two runs around like 45 to $60, depending on obviously what you get. And the last up from Farfetch is actually this mushroom lamp from Hay. Hay is like an interior home goods store. They are mostly known for their paper lanterns, which I actually have one of, but we wanted to get a small little portable lamp that we could kind of bring to whatever room we needed it in. And this like mushroom style lamp is so clutch. It projects like the perfect amount of light and it's dimmable too, which is really cool. I think it was like 110 ish dollars. So kind of on the pricey end, but because it's portable and because it comes in a couple different colors, I think it's a really great gift, especially for somebody who's really into like making their home look nice. So yeah, that has been super clutch recently. No big lights allowed in the house. Gotta be only lamps and lanterns. And that is it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hopefully this one didn't go on for too long. In case you guys were wondering, the next video is going to be my entire footwear collection. I've been prepping that video for a while and I've just kept putting it off because like a new pair of shoes comes in or something's on the way and I just want to wait so I can include it. It. but yeah it's finally time so that'll be my next video that might be in a week or two I'm not exactly sure yet but thank you guys so much for watching I really do appreciate it if you enjoyed the video drop a like down below share it with a friend subscribe to the channel if you're new and I will see you guys in the next one catch you later